Hey guys, how's it going? It's Miss Leslie with Shades of Development out of school time from New Hope Well Elementary. I am back again today with another exciting video. If you watched my previous one on the rug dyeing, you may have heard some sneak peeks of me saying how I have a pet who doesn't shed, but I was actually wrong in saying that, which you'll see what I mean in a second. And if you watched my last video, I'm going to give you an update at the end on how the rug looks. It uh, dried all day yesterday since it was so beautiful out. But today I have an exciting, more of a show and tell type of format. So you are going to get to meet my new pet today. Um, I don't want to say what it is yet until I show you, but you're actually going to get to meet my pet and then three of his friends. I just gave away part of it by saying he, because he is a boy. So everybody sit tight. And when I come back, I will have somebody very special for you to meet. So be right back. All right, guys, I am back. And the anticipated moment that you've been waiting for, I have my sweet boy here and the with a drum roll, maybe, if you feel like it. Here he is. <laughs> this is Percy the Ball Python. And look at him. Isn't he just so cute? Percy, you're going to look at the camera. Let's see if I can. Oh, look at how cute he is. So Percy, as I said, is a ball python. He is a cinnamon banana ball python. And that is why he has such beautiful coloring so the cinnamon in him is what gives him this dark almost like a lavender color and then the banana part is this beautiful um almost a peach color and another cute thing is if you can see okay if you can see these um freckles that he has all banana pythons, ball pythons get those. He has a really cool one over here by his neck. If I can find it in the camera. All banana pythons, here it is, they get these freckles. If you know when you get bananas from the store and you leave them sitting out and they get ripe, they get those dark spots. So that is why these are referred to as bananas. They get dark spots just like that. And they only get their spots on this darker coloring. They will never have the spots on their pattern. So that's just something really cool. And I just love his little, his little marking down his neck and his pattern all the way down his back and down the side. Oh, I'm just obsessed with him. I just think he is the cutest thing ever. So as I said, Percy is a ball python. And they get that name because when, if you see some snakes, maybe, you know, cobra, when they're getting defensive, they'll cobra up or a rattlesnake will rattle their tail. Well, these are called ball pythons because when they get scared, I don't really want to do it with them, but if you see how he's kind of gets scared, their instinct, he's not going to do it today, but their instinct is they want to ball up. One of my first pictures of him is he, of him balled up. He literally, when I sent it to my mom, she said, why did you tie him in a knot? So they're called that because they ball up when they get scared. Now, Percy is only 11 weeks old. He is just a little baby. So he is so small right now. He weighs, last time I weighed him, he was only about, uh, they weigh ball pythons in grams. When I weighed him, when I got him, which is just about almost three weeks ago, he was only 126 grams. So keep that in mind because you're going to, like I said, get to meet some of his friends and his biggest friend. I'm going to tell you what that one weighs later on. So he is just super small, just a fresh little hatchling. Now when they hatch, um, most breeders will not sell them until they have had, they have shed for the first time. That's why when I said in the previous video that I didn't have animals that shed. And I was like, well, I was wrong when I said that because I forgot snakes do shed. So breeders normally wait until they shed for their first time and have a first meal before they will let you have them. So since I have had Percy, he has had two meals. Now I know a lot of people give snakes a bad rap because they're like, oh, I can never feed it. What is it supposed to eat? 
So Percy, since he is so small, he does eat rat pups. Now I do frozen thawed. So that means the animal is already dead. It's been frozen. So all I have to do is just thaw it out and feed it to him. That way I'm not having to feed him a live animal. I'm not having to kill anything myself. They actually recommend for ball pythons to do frozen thawed because sometimes people will just drop in the live mouse into their enclosure and not make sure that they have eaten it. And actually the animal, the mouse or rat, whatever it is, will start to hurt the snake to protect itself. So they can scratch the snake, they can bite the snake, and it's just dangerous unless you wanna sit there and actually watch and make sure the snake eats the rat or the mouse completely. So I do frozen thawed for him. It's very easy. I can get them in like a pack of 10. They last for six to nine months in the freezer. Real, real simple. So I'm gonna give you some fun facts about, about ball pythons. So like I already said is they're called that because they'll ball up with their head towards the center and that's how they get their name. But as you handle them more and more, just like any animal, they will get warmed up to you, they'll get used to you and uh, they won't get stressed out as much. Another thing is that they're also called royal ball pythons, and that is because uh, ancient royalty actually wore them as jewelry. So they would maybe, let's see if he cooperates. If I can get his talk about. They'd wear them around their neck like a necklace, or they'd let them coil up around their wrist like a bracelet. So they also have that name of the Royal Ball Pythons because if you are royalty, you wear most jewelry. Ooh. <laughs> Another thing is no two ball pythons are alike. He is squeezing my finger. So just like a snowflake, no two ball pythons are alike. And if, which I didn't know this, they call ball python patterns morphs and there are so many morphs of ball pythons and there are some out there that are just absolutely gorgeous. Of course, those absolutely gorgeous ball pythons come with an also gorgeous uh, price to them. Now there are all the way down to normal ball pythons, which you'll get to see later on in this video. And then there's all the way up to some that are just so crazy looking and they have certain genes they can have hypo genes hypo means it is visible on them and they can be het for a gene which means they carry that gene but it is not seen in them so a lot of times when breeders breed snakes let's say um, one is 100% het for something, the snake they're breeding it with is the same way, all their babies will be hypo for that gene, meaning that gene will be visible in them. So that's how some snakes can get expensive. Maybe they're het for a certain gene that somebody is wanting to get. Um, but that's just, that's a lot more than we're gonna get into today. So basically all their patterns and their colors, those are known as morphs. You have all different kinds. Um, and like I said, Percy's morph is a, cinnamon banana. Let's see, ball pythons, they stay smaller than other python uh, breeds. So maybe you've seen a Burmese python, a reticulated python, those get huge. Now, sweet little Percy, he's not gonna get, since he is a boy, he will not get any bigger than three to four feet, maybe. Um, females do get bigger, which I'll talk about again later in this video. Uh, Burmese pythons, reticulated pythons, those can get up to 15 feet long or bigger, which is wild to me that somebody would want a snake that big as a pet. So he will not get that big. He's just a little guy. Um, their average lifespan, this is crazy. This bad boy, he is going to live 20 to 30 years. <laughs> so I think that's just crazy to me that they live that long. So he is just going to be around for a while. You know, most dogs or things like that, they live maybe 10 to 14 years at most. Not this guy. Uh, what else can I tell you? Okay, so... When you talk about um, 
if we go back to breeding, when they lay eggs, those are referred to as clutches. So when a female lays eggs, that is a clutch. They normally have around 10, eight to 10 eggs in a clutch. And when the female has those eggs, they coil up around them. And their eggs are not like eggs that we're used to seeing, like chicken eggs or bird eggs. They're almost squishy. And that is because the female will um, coil around them and squish the eggs together so they stick together. That way, if a predator was to come to try and steal the eggs, they can't do that because all the eggs are stuck together. And then when those eggs come to hatch, they normally incubate for about 80 days um, once the eggs are laid. And when those eggs hatch, they call that pipping when the baby snake peep, <laughs> I can't get over how cute he is. When they poke through, the egg they refer to that as pipping and then the like let's say there's eight eggs in a clutch one comes out of its egg first it'll crawl over the other eggs so that way its brothers and sisters know that it's out and that'll make the other eggs want to hatch faster which i think that's just really cool um baby ball pythons are called hatchlings so like i said percy's still considered a hatchling because he is only 11 weeks old he's just a little baby um, hatchling lengths range from about 14 to 17 inches. So about a foot when they first come out, I'd say he's a little over a foot. He just seems so long to me sometimes when he stretches out. Baby hatchlings have very bright colors. So that's something to remember when they hatch, they're just super bright. Those colors are so vivid, um, which as they get older, those colors do fade. So if you see, like for him, his colors are so bright. Now these might get a little more faded as he gets older. Some other ball pythons, they can look so like a bright yellow and almost a lavender and that will fade out as they get older. And like I said, there are just so many different morphs and colors and patterns in ball pythons now, it's crazy. Now, if you are looking for a pet and you say, I don't have time for a dog or cat, um, I don't want to have the upkeep, I don't want something that stinks, things like that, I was the same way. I wanted a pet, but I'm really not home enough to have a dog and I'm allergic to cats. And so I didn't want an animal that if I got it, I wasn't going to have the time to dedicate to that. So my fiance and I kind of started getting interested in ball pythons. We did a lot of research before we got ours, which I re recommend anytime you go to get a pet that you do your research. Don't just go on a whim, go to the pet store, you see a puppy, I'm gonna get this puppy and not do the research and see what it's gonna take to take care of that pet. So with that being said, if you want a low maintenance pet, I'm telling you ball pythons are the way to go. And if you watch videos on um, like let's say you do want a snake, but you don't know what snake you want because there are so many out there. Ball pythons are one of the top recommended ones for a beginner snake, and that is because they're so docile. The odds of him biting me are slim to none. Like I said, if I go to get him out and he's stressed, his reaction, unlike other snakes, is not going to be to try and bite me. It's going to be he wants to ball up and get away from me. So, this is a great snake for kids. I'm hoping if and when we get to go back to school that he will be acclimated to being handled enough to where I can bring him for you guys to see him in person. Because this is the kind of snake you can just pass to a child and it's going to be fine. He's not going to bite. If anything, he's just gonna try and hide a little bit. Um, and then he's also super low maintenance in what he lives in. Now, right now, I have him in a container with some coconut style um, repta chip in the bottom. And that is so it'll hold in the hydration. You want their enclosures to stay decently hydrated so that way when they go into shed, their shed will come off in one piece. If their shed comes off in pieces, that means it's not moist enough in their enclosure. So I have the coconut repta chip. Um, he just has a hide because in the wild, these little cuties actually live in termite mounds. So they are in the dark 
most of the time. And they're a little more nocturnal, so they kind of come alive more at night than during the day. Um, and they love warm areas. So in his hide, I have a heating pad that is underneath the container. And that is where he stays most of the time during the day. Today, he was out and about and by his water dish for some reason. I was like, are you confused on what time of the day it is? I'll show you his enclosure in a second. Um, so if you're saying, I do want a snake, how much is it gonna cost up front? The snake itself is just gonna depend on what type of snake you get. Like I said, you can get them as cheap as $25 for your basic one. I've seen where some snakes have sold for thousands of dollars based on their morph and what they look like. So that the snake itself depends on what you get. Now, as for the materials that you need, it's super affordable. You just need your container, drill a few holes in it. Um, I got the rest of his supplies, most of them off of Amazon, his heating pad. I got some metal tongs that I use for when I feed him. He has a little wooden arch because that gives him something to crawl over and crawl on. He has the water dish. I have an infrared thermometer. That way I can make sure his heating pad is the right temperature. That's not too hot, not too hot, not too cold. Um, and he's just a great little guy. I love to get him out, let him just crawl around. He sits and watches TV with me. And we're just, again, I mean, look how cute he is. How could you not love him? I know snakes get a bad rap, but I'm telling you, they are just such a great pet. Of course, they're not you know, like a dog where they get excited to see you, <laughs> but they definitely do get used to you to where um, they don't mind being held as much and they don't get as stressed out when you go to get him out. So he is just a lot of fun. I love him. I love his colors. I love that little tongue of his. He is just precious. So I'm going to give you what's going to happen next is I'm going to give you a tour of his home and then we're going to take a little adventure to my fiance Hunter's house so you can meet some of Percy's friends. So I hope you enjoyed getting to meet Percy. He is just such a great little guy. So handsome. Put your head out here so they can see you. <laughs> so cute. Oh and then they are not slimy like you would think they are. He's <clears throat> he's super soft. I'm sorry, I can't stand it. Oh my gosh. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad he's really coming a lot for you guys here at the end. Percy, you are a movie star. So I hope you got to meet him. I hope when we go back to school that I'll be able to bring him one day and do a fun little lesson with you guys on snakes, how to take care of them, how fun they can be as a pet, that they're not as scary, they're not, um, gross that they're just so cute and make a great friend for anybody so i hope you enjoy him um next will be you getting to see his enclosure and then we'll get to go meet some of his friends all right see you in a minute all right here we are this is percy's home as you can see it is just your basic um enclosure i'm going to see if he'll go back in his hide for me this is just your basic container. I actually got this container at uh, Target. And then, he's adoring. And then there he goes. And we just drilled some holes in it. You can kind of see the holes here on the side. And that way air gets in and he is fine. This is his Reptichip. So it actually comes in a huge big block all stuck together. And, oops, <laughs> you put it in water and the block breaks apart. And then this way, it just really holds in that moisture for him. So that way, um, like I said, when it's time for him to go into shed, oh, look at him. <laughs> he's so funny. So that way when he's going into shed, it's nice and moist in here for him. This is his water dish. Now I know it's pink and you're like, Leslie, I thought you said he's a boy. Well, he is, but when I got the stuff and prepared, I was planning on getting a female. Um, I knew I wanted a banana ball python, but they did not have any females at that time where I got it from. So I ended up going with cute little Percy because I just loved him. I loved his colors. So that's why there's a pink dish. So I'll eventually we'll have to replace that with a, a blue one. 
And then this is his log. He loves this log, which is so funny to me. Like tonight when I came in to get him, he was from this log stretched all the way over onto his hide. I think he likes how it feels on his belly. And sometimes he'll be underneath the hide. But like I said, you always want to hide on the cool end for them and hide on the warm end because that's how they feel safe. They don't like to feel exposed. And that comes to the size of the enclosure. For a ball python, you want an enclosure that's big enough to where they can fully stretch out along at least two sides of the enclosure. So Percy can live in this for quite a while before he outgrows it. And ball pythons don't like a huge area because again, they don't like to feel exposed. This helps them feel safe, secure. Most of the time he is under that hide. I am gonna bother him one more minute because I want you to see um, under his hide. So you'll get to see him kind of jump a little bit. So here, he's like, God, why do you keep bothering me? So here's the area under his hide. And I just wanted to show you this real quick because you can see his um, heating mat under here. So that is where he keeps warm. This is my infrared thermometer. So I'll just show, kind of show you what you want to keep that temperature. So you can see it's about 96, 97 ish. I think I just keep moving around on his heat pad and that's what you want it to be. You want it to stay warm for them. So I actually, the heat pads attached underneath and if you can see right there, I actually have a thermostat on it. That helps it stay the temperature it actually needs to be because if not, you really don't have a way of regulating it. It could get too hold, cold or it could get too hot and it could actually burn their bellies. And I recommend a heating pad for a ball python, not a heating lamp because they want the warmth on their belly. Where I know some reptiles, they, you can use heating lamps, but for ball pythons, they like that warmth on their little tummies. So this is his enclosure. He just hangs out. Like I said, today I came in and he was completely stretched out. So most of the time during the day, he stays in his hide in this and then at night I'll see him with his head poked out or he'll be crawling around exploring but he's just a great guy so I hope you enjoyed getting to meet Percy and stay tuned because next clip we'll be getting to meet three of his friends all right hello everybody as you can see we're at a different location um, I am at my fiance's house and we are here so you can meet a few more of Percy's friends we're gonna start with the smallest and we're gonna work our way up so that way you can see the size comparison. Now, if you remember, Percy is only about 11 weeks old, so he's more of a newer hatchling. He is quite small. And so now we're gonna to switch to a female. This is Lilith. This is Hunter's Pride and Joy. She was born in August. So as you can see, she's a little bigger. Now Lilith, her morph, she is a vanilla exanthic and she is 100% het for ghosts. Now their het gene means that they carry it, but it is not visible on them. So now if she was to be paired with a male who was 100% het ghost, then their babies would be visible for that ghost gene. But you can see her beautiful coloring. She's a nice black and gray and white. And see, she's just super comfortable. She'll just wrap herself around, just crawl around. And she is such a sweet little girl. So this is Lilith. All right, stay tuned and we'll have another one. All right, so the next one you're going to see, his name is JR, which stands for, is short for Jonathan Rhino. Um, and he is about, we're going to assume he's a year old. We're not really sure on his age. We actually got him off of Craigslist. But just based on his size and everything, we're going to say that he's a little over a year old. So let's meet JR. This is JR. So as you can see, he's a little bigger than Lilith. A lot bigger than Percy. JR is just your basic normal ball python. If you were 
wanting one that's your most affordable one or your cheapest one, this would be it. But he is still just as beautiful as the others. He's got that golden brown, the light coloring down at the bottom, the black, and I love his pattern on his stomach. It's just so neat. And now, JR is probably the most, they're all friendly, but JR is probably the most um, calm being handled. He'll just crawl right around. He doesn't care. You can just put him around your neck, which if you remember, I said that they are also known as royal ball pythons, and that's because people used to wear them as jewelry. So see what a great necklace he is. And he can just stay there and he'll just stay and hang out. He doesn't care. He's such a great one. So this is JR. He's about a little over a year old and he is just your normal ball python. Thank you, JR, for visiting us today. All right, it is time to meet Percy's final friend, Miss Dolly. She is a little over three years old, so you're gonna see what a, you know, basic, near full grown female size looks like. Now remember, female ball pythons do get much bigger than males, so be prepared. Let's meet Dolly. <laughs> All right, this is Dolly. Look at how big she is. <laughs> She's a lot heavier, obviously, than the others. She is a lot thicker. She's a lot stronger. She is just a big girl. Now, Dolly is, she's similar to your regular ball python, but she is a pastel, which means she has, her colors are much lighter. So I want to do a side-by-side. -side. We're going to have JR pop back in just for a minute because I want you to be able to see um, <laughs> how different the pastel looks from just the normal. So JR is gonna pop back in here real quick. Okay, so here's JR again. So if you look, just look at how different their colors are from the pastel to just your normal. So you can see just how different it is, how much lighter she is. Now she is at the size where if you wanted to breed her, she is at that size where you can, she is big enough. But yeah, I just love seeing them side by side, seeing how just different their colors are. Here's JR back. Let's see if we can get old Dolly to stretch out a little bit. Now remember, see how she's kind of balling up? That is again why they are called by ball pythons. That's their defense. They want to ball up if they're scared. But you can see her tongue flicking, so that's good. But let's see if we can. So just look at how big she is. She's gotta be about three feet long, which females do get um, anywhere to three to five feet at their biggest. Males normally stay more around three or four feet long. And we just weighed her the other night. They always do whole pythons by in grams, and she was a little over 1,100 grams, which is quite heavy compared to all the others. And if she's quite strong too, and she won't stay still. Let's see if we can oh. see how much bigger she is compared to how little JR looked around my neck. But she's just a beautiful big girl, a great one, a beautiful pastel. Let's see, she's kind of crawl up on the table. But I hope you enjoyed meeting all of Percy's friends. All of our sweet ball pythons, Percy, Lilith, JR, and Dolly. And these are just such great low maintenance pets. They uh, don't require much. Um, if you remember from Percy's, most of them just want a hide, something to crawl over. Um, now, Dolly and Lilith, we actually have a rack system for them, so. Theirs is almost like a full hide <laughs> that they stay in. JR is in more of an exoterra. That way he can kind of be on display. Look at her just coming alive now. <laughs> so.
So they are so much fun. And like I said, um, snakes get a bad rap. People are like, oh my gosh, you have snakes. But they are, <laughs> she's calling her on the camera thing, but they are just so great. If you go on vacation, you don't have to worry about anybody really watching them. They just eat once a week. Just leave them some water in there. And the more you handle them, the more comfortable they get with you. So when I first got Percy, when he was just a fresh hatchling, he was super shy and timid and would get very nervous when I got him out, but he's starting to get more adjusted. These other ones, <laughs> excuse me, the camera. <laughs> These other ones are more used to being handled. So they just really come alive. Look at her. So thank you guys for coming to hang out with us. I hope you enjoyed seeing all of our friends. And I challenge you to post a picture of your cute little pet. And we will see you on the next one. Can you say bye, Dolly? She flicked her tongue. That's her saying goodbye. All right, we'll see you guys next time. Oh, and he wanted to say hi too. He's not a snake, but he's cute. This is Oreo. He's a Boston Terrier. And he want to come say hi too. All right, we'll see you guys later. Bye.